from Starbucks to Target, Ramadan goes mainstream. As the Muslim world observes Ramadan, many U.S. companies are recognizing the importance of expanding their markets to cater to Muslims. Target recently announced its first ever Ramadan and Eid collection, featuring products designed for Muslims, including an illustrated children's book titled Moon's Ramadan by Natasha Khan Khazi. Um, many other retailers, such as Party City and West Elm, have also released Muslim-friendly products. Liz Bukhar, a religious ethicist, noticed an increasing trend of companies marketing Muslim-friendly products in 2017. While some have criticized co companies for cultural appropriation, many see this as a positive trend towards inclusion and recognition of the Muslim community. So Armin, what do you think about this? Is this progress or is this Islamic takeover of Target? <laughs> I think it's the other way around. I actually love this and I support it. It's not the Islamic takeover of Target is capitalism taking over religion this is exactly oh. what we need this is exactly what we need this is the process in which like you know a lot of muslims might celebrate this right but this is how secularization happens this is the process this is the beginnings mark my words okay guys you're gonna think i'm a prophet in a couple of years this is the beginnings of what happened to christmas okay so the, we need what we need right now is for religious traditions to become part of the market in a way that they become commercialized and turned into products and secularized and enjoyed so much, you know, in the way that you're secularizing it and, you know, improved. Um, because, you know, traditions, Christmas was is not really that fun without capitalism, right? It, because it was consumerized that's how it's so beautiful and joyful and festive right religions themselves by themselves are not very festive um but what happens is that eventually this becomes so festive that you could enjoy it and take part in it you will see that non-muslims will take part in it right because there will be a lot of things added to it a lot of things would be cute about it a lot of things people would want to in the in the in the spirit of inclusion and tolerance and accepting non-muslims and there will be an internal fight between muslims they will see non-hijabi women taking part with islamic activities and some muslims go like what the hell she's like praying in a mosque and she's not even wearing the hijab and some other muslims who are more liberalized they were like oh no this is great look they're enjoying our culture so uh, there will be some internal fights and stuff like that and um, but eventually it will become so normalized that it would slowly get disassociated from its religious meanings. And it would just become something to enjoy and something festive and some sort of a holiday and some sort of entertainment. And that benefits. Um, so, guys, there, you have to categorize these things, right? There is a reform process and there is a secularization process. And you can't confuse these things together. They can't be any more different. They're actually the polar opposite of each other, right? So ref just for people to you know, get this, remember this, reform is bad, secularization is good. Reform is the process of trying to change the exterior of a religion just so that you could keep the main belief system, right? Because modernization has happened and the way that the religion looks does it not match the modern values anymore so you have to change the exterior so that the religion survives itself the belief within the quran and the foundation the fundamentals of the religion survives right but secularization is the exact opposite of that the secularization is that you keep the exterior you keep the rituals right but the core goes away the belief goes away. For example, if you look at Christmas, the rituals, the culture, the all the exterior uh, is still there, but people who practice it do not necessarily believe in Christianity. And even if they do, it's not really necessary for you to be part of Christmas. Christmas is not about Christianity that much anymore, right? Um, and you can see that in Judaism a lot too. You see that in Judaism a lot, you have um, many atheists in Judaism that practice all the cultural heritage and everything that they don't believe in. In Christianity, you see that as well. You don't see that yet in Islam. 
you don't see that whole process of secularization hasn't started in Islam, but this looks to me like the beginnings of that process is happening. And the reason why, why we as atheists have to, I think, could celebrate that is because um, leaving religion is more, for most people, is an emotional journey rather than a rational one. Right? So even if people can tell, like a lot of atheists who who left religion because of rational reasons can't understand, they're always like, why do people believe in these things? How could anybody rationally believe this thing? But this is because a lot of atheists are confused. They think that people stay with their religion because they are looking for a belief system uh, that matches, um, you know, a rational uh, uh, that reflects the reality of the world out there. Like people, religious people and atheist people and everyone else is not are not going out there and thinking about the world philosophy and to have a belief system that matches reality. That's not what most people are doing, right? So religion, the function that religion is, the function that religion has in people's lives is not to give you an idea about how the world is. It's about having a community that you belong to um, and having an identity that um, you uh, associate with and also having some rituals that are part of an essential part of the human experience right everybody like as, rituals are an important part of um, our needs so these are the real reasons why people have religion right so what we as atheists if you want people to get rid of the belief if you could keep the rituals for them if you could provide avenues where they get to keep the community and keep the identity and keep the rituals without the belief, then the process of getting rid of that belief becomes easier because they do not have to sacrifice all those rituals and the community and the identity to get rid of the belief, right? So see, like, for example, in the Jewish community, you see a lot, a lot more secularists and a lot more atheists, right? Because you can still do all the um, Jewish festivals and rituals that is associated with religion, even though you're an atheist. They're, they don't, people don't see a Because it, they, they think of it as associated with heritage. Yeah. Not religious exactly. belief. Like, like Nowruz. Yeah, so Nowruz is essentially a secularized holiday, and it's celebrated as part of someone's cultural heritage, but really, it for many people for, it's still religious for but for millions of people it isn't what i love yeah. about this is i'm actually in full support of this because i think that i don't know there are probably some people who are like oh my god america is being islamized da, 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 da. that's dumb that's dumb as hell <laughs> No, not at all. I think it is a sign of a superior culture when many different types of celebrations can occur openly and are celebrated and are integrated into the public life and consciousness. So mm. I'm in full support. I think, Armin, if you scroll down a little bit. One second, one second. So Taz is not listening, pay, not paying attention to what I'm no, saying. No, they're saying, not. Taz is saying... Yeah, Taz is saying, no, secular Jews don't celebrate our festival uh, like Yom Kippur and festivals. And he's saying, no, not all of us. Well, you're not paying attention. I didn't say all of you. There are many atheists and secular Jews that do celebrate these uh, festivals. That I didn't say all of you. Many doesn't mean all, but there's many of them. So there is that possibility. That is a thing that you could do. Um, I didn't generalize it to all atheists and secular Jews, but that is something that you could do. That is something that is allowed. And in fact, uh, when I was in Israel, many atheists and secular Jews told me that they were told that you can be an atheist, just make sure you keep practicing your culture. Like keep come and do the, do the prayers, come to the festivals, come to the ritual, do all of these things. It does, we don't care that you don't believe in a God. They're encouraged to continue to take part. So that is a, an option. That door is not closed to them just because they have lost their belief. So that's the, the fact that that option is there, I think it makes the process a lot easier. But yeah, go on. Um, Scroll down. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, did we have a picture of it? Keep oh. going, keep going. That what it looks like on target damn okay you can't mm. see it well but this is like one of the children's books that's now in target to 
you know, show, I don't know, their, as part of their Ramadan collection. And it's called The Moon's Ramadan. And it's a little children's book about the moon going around the world and watching the different Ramadan celebrations on Eid in all the different places around the world and like different cultural traditions to, to celebrate Eid. So I think that's adorable. And then it also made adorable. me think that if, cause, cause if you want to properly secularize a holiday, you need something really cute for kids, right? And the way like Easter bunnies, Santa, elves, reindeer, you know, da, da, da. But I'm like, I don't feel like there's a lot of stuff that you could latch on to for Eid to make it cute for kids. But the moon, the moon is perfect. We need to have like a little cutesy moon for the kids. I think that could be a potential thing. A little kit, kind of something that you characterify. Yeah. Or maybe... Yeah, or maybe like lanterns, like maybe little lanterns. No, the moon. No, lanterns is like um, orientalist view. Of, mm -hmm. I think the moon is so centralized within the Islamic calendar and the Islamic culture and everything. I think it's such a perfect thing to to highlight. As this is a great idea, um, and because like the the Islamic calendar is a lunar calendar rather than a solar one, right? So I think that's fantastic. I mean, they, they call it, yeah. But also look at the picture, right? Mm -hmm. Look at the author, right? It's not, this is the future of Islam, mm -hmm. okay? She's not, she's not wearing the hijab. She's, she has a product that is Islamic centric. And she, not only she's not wearing the hijab, she has some of her chest showing, you know? Mm -hmm. This is so secular, this is so secular. This is like, I, you know, you know why I love this? Because somebody like Daniel Hayraju would look at this and they would be like, danger, 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 guys. This is Islam, Islam is in danger. What the hell is happening, <laughs> right? This is, guys, if you, got, if people are watching this thinking like, oh, no, we're atheists. We should hate this. You're wrong, okay? Just remember that religious con Muslim conservatives are, would look this and they would fear this, what you're looking at more than they fear atheists more than they fear jews more than they fear they, they, they fear this more than the devil himself more than the antichrist okay more than the jaw himself okay <laughs> the jaw and shaitan combined <laughs> this is the, this would be a this, they consider this as, this is they see this as a corruption from within right so you should love this because they hate this, <laughs> okay? And when Muslim conservatives look at this and they're like, danger, 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 okay? They are right. They are right. This is There's no better way of secularizing Islam than what you're looking at right now on, this, on the screen. So I celebrate this. This is fantastic. Thank you so much. Yeah, I it's love, cute. It's adorable. It's adorable. It really is. Um, also, 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 this, is, this is gets conservatives out from both ends. True. This will get conservatives right because the muslim conservatives will hate this and the far right anti-muslim bigots will be like why are people liking muslim things okay this is we because the far right muslim anti-muslim bigots they want people when you think islam to think oh child marriage terrorism you know abusive to women right like that's what the image want to come to, to your mind so if the you Taliban. think islam yeah, the Taliban, ISIS, Al Qaeda, right? If you think if we're going to a world where we think Islam and we're looking at cute little pictures of a moon and children and like colorful stuff and a um, happy happy lady smiling like that, right? If that's what comes to people's mind, they're like, that's that's a world where they're not going to the biggest are not going to be relevant as well because people are going to have a very positive um, image when they think of Islam, right? Um, so both sides are going to hate this. So we'll see. It's funny. Uh, yeah, this is very yeah. interesting. Hmm. Um, so yeah, I love this comment. Secular Sakai is saying commercial bastardization of religious traditions. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> then Darko is saying this is actual progress. Just imagine this happening in the early 2000s. Yeah, see, like, this is what I'm talking about. Should I go buy something from the Target Ramadan collection to help Yes. boost their numbers to show no to, should i should i come, engage show in this myself you know yeah and bring it and show it to us on the show like tell us show us and you know what you people yeah atheists celebrating this is something else like quran burning atheists celebrating this would be 
would be even we have more a, Should we have an Eid celebration together? That'd be pretty funny. Yeah. Let's do that. Let's do that. Oh, Eid Mubarak supplies. They have a whole section on Target.com. <laughs> Ramadan <laughs> World Decor. Girls, we're getting into it. <laughs> Oh, look at oh my god, they have little signs that you can put in your yard. Hmm. Oh, this is See, like, oh my goodness. You know why I like this? Because now Muslim children get to have an actual childhood. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of all the horrible, joyless Islamic things that we grew up with. Okay, not all of you, not them. all, most of them are not raised Shia, to be fair. Where everything <laughs> is about crying. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> that was a good one. That was a good one. That was a good one. <laughs> I feel like I had to defend the community for a second. I'm like, not all of us were miserable ouch, Shias. Ouch, 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 ouch. Okay. <laughs> Wait, I thought you were pro Shia. Now what happened? I mean, um, this is all the, it's all the Kia. Um, <laughs> wait, let's look at their collection for a second. What do we have here? No, wait, let's let make this bigger. They have dates. They have more children's books. A lot of children's mm -hmm. books. Oh, little cards. Light hangings, okay. Little lanterns, balloons, a lot okay, of dates. Going full on Orientalist. Yeah. You're just owning it, I guess, huh? Yeah. Cute, cute, cute. As long, okay. See, this is what I knew that this was going to be a thing. I was like, I have a problem. I don't have a problem with it until I see children's books with little girls wearing the hijab, and then uh, I have a problem. Yeah. And then yeah, I have a big yeah. problem. Give it time. Give it time. Give it time. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's a lot yeah. where little girls are wearing the hijab. Ooh, I hate this. Ooh, I hate this. Okay, I just... Yep. Yep. Okay. Okay, slowly, slowly, slowly. You can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free. Too sexy to show most of it here on YouTube. We draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, Mother Mary, Japanese God, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art.